Hello loves, time for a story. Am I Hallucinating? Written by Tokyo Doll Hey guys, it's Sylvia Moon. I have the craziest effing story to share with you, to put it mildly. Pour yourself some tea, or tequila, and listen to this shit. First off, I love to go to thrift stores. I'm always looking for something unique, something that stands out. As a young woman on social media, it often feels like every influencer account is the same. Every girl wants the same makeup, the same clothing brands, the same damn tea talks. You know, the tea detox systems so highly promoted right now. I strive to be different. I strive to not look like every other girl on Instagram that's shitting her brains out from expensive laxative teas and showing off her unicorn blender bottles wearing high-priced friendship bracelets on the beach. Whew, that's so specific, but you get it. I know you do. We all fucking get it. So I decided to go thrift shopping to find something cool to feature. I even filmed it via Instagram Live, so I could have more solid content. I had several hundred viewers at one point. Pretty rad. Someone on Live mentioned finding some cool antique jewelry, so I went to scan a booth filled with odd, sparkling pieces. One of the pendants I noticed initially was very ornate with a glittery green stone in the center. It almost looked like the sparkles in the stone were moving on their own, like they were breathing. It was surrounded by three golden fish with red, glittering stones where their eyes would be. I loved it. I immediately asked a worker to open the case so I could look at it closer. Oh, that one? That one is pretty expensive. I glanced at the tag, and there was no price written. Well, what exactly is the price then? She looked at me, up and down. Then she looked at my phone disapprovingly. I noticed I was still live, so I quickly shut it off. I felt that I looked immature. I was ashamed. I could envision her complaining to her boomer friends about the dumb millennial that came in today. She quietly, yet sternly, notified me that neither filming nor photography were allowed in the store. I apologized. So, is the pendant for sale? I'm sure you'd like me to get out of here. She opened the case and handed it to me, gently, as though it were alive. I felt excitement rush through my body. Shop therapy, perhaps. The perfect find. I had never seen anything so mesmerizing in my life. I unhooked the clasp and got to try it on. Then I noticed that the chain seemed a little worn. She told me it was $65, cash only. I looked at it closely to see if I could spot any gold or silver markings. There it was, .925 sterling. I figured it was worth it, nodded, and handed her the money. I always carry an assortment of cash when I go thrifting. No one ever has change. She told me that there are no returns and no receipts. I thought it odd, but thanked her and took my prize while I studied it in the light. As I walked to my car, I put the necklace on and started to open the door when I noticed someone staring at me from across the street. I looked around and noticed everyone in the whole vicinity was staring at me mouths agape. I looked behind me, nothing startling that they could have been looking at. What the fuck? Their mouths made me uneasy, open so wide they made large circles, as if they were cartoons. One man ran in my direction as quickly as humanly possible and stopped right in front of me. I was frozen for a split second. 
I held my door open as I jumped in and locked it. He stood there, staring. He started scratching his face, his eyes. He screamed, She lives, as they bled and watered. As he jammed his fingers into one of the sockets, I gasped and focused on starting my car and getting the hell out of there. When I looked back up, he was gone. Everyone was acting normal, walking, talking, sitting on a bench flipping through their phone. I drove home, wondering what I saw, wondering what happened. I was positive that I must have been hallucinating. When I got home, my skin crawled. I could hardly wait to run inside my home and take a long shower. As I started to open my door and get out of my car, I noticed that the necklace had fallen off. I was so upset. In all of the commotion, I hadn't noticed. I looked all over the car floor, then realized it was on my seat. It must have fallen into my lap when I started the car. I carried it inside with a strong urge to scrub every tingly prick of fear off my body and get a much-needed nap. I felt kind of weird. I still do. I'm starting to become confused about what I'm seeing and who I am. So, do you believe me? I wasn't drinking, wasn't on drugs, and I honestly couldn't make this shit up. Thank you everyone, I hope you're all doing well. If you like my videos, please subscribe and give me a like. Have a great night everyone. Love, The Mistress.